evening. Here at the Royal Albert Hall in London tonight, we're going to watch the finals of the George Wimpy ABA Championships. Now, these are the National Amateur Boxing Finals. They've been going a long time. They were founded in 1881. And over the last 40 years or so, they've certainly been used as a springboard by young amateurs to go on to bigger things. For example, little Charlie Magri won four ABA titles. And then in 1983, he became the world professional flyweight champion. John Conti won two ABA titles in the early 1970s. And then in 1974, he became the world light heavyweight champion as a professional. It's Conte, world light heavyweight champion at 23. Jim Watt of Scotland had a very long wait indeed between his two peaks. He won the ABA title in 1968. It took him another 11 years before he became the professional world lightweight champion in 1979. And then of course there was Alan Minter, ABA champion. And then in 1980, he became the undisputed middleweight champion of the world as a professional. So tonight, who knows, we may well be watching young men who will go on one day to become world professional champions. Let's go inside this famous arena now and see the best of tonight's action in the 1991 ABA Championships. Wearing the red sash, Alan Mooney of Scotland, who had a rough first round. He had to take a standing count against this boy in the blue headguard and the blue sash, Peter Culshaw from the Highton Club in Lancashire. This is the uh, light flyweight final, the lightest weight of all. And Culshaw, the youngest man in these championships, he won't be 18 until uh, eight days' time. And he started like a whirlwind. And the right hand kept chopping into the head of. Uh, the 19-year-old Scott, and in the end, the referee had to give a standing count over Mooney, but uh, to the Scots' credit, he came back very well at the end of the first round, so here we are on the second. Culshaw still very much fancied to win this. In only his fourth senior contest. So far in these championships, nobody has taken Culshaw beyond the second round. Can Mooney do it? Alan Mooney in the red from the Sydney Street Club in Glasgow. Not the Scottish champion, he was beaten in the championships by Paul Weir in the final. But uh, Weir elected to go to the European Championships, which are running at this moment in Gothenburg, instead of coming to the ABAs. So Mooney had a second chance. Culshaw still slogging away with big sweeping left and right. And this is the second standing count of this contest. There was one in the first round over the same man, Alan Mooney of Scotland. Culshaw, it has to be said, is bleeding quite badly from the nose. In fact, they both are. Stop, stop. And the referee's going to have a look at these noses because uh, both men are shedding quite a lot of blood. Culshaw particularly. This is Culshaw having his nose wiped and being cleaned up. And perhaps the same thing may happen to Mooney. Yes, it is. Second round, Alan Mooney in the red uh, head guard. Have to pause while the referee disposes of his uh, little bits of paper and off we go again there'll be time off for that stoppage of course <laughs> Culture going to work again putting up a putting in a very strong attack with two hands trying to get this over Mooney 
is a strong lad and he's still there and still coming forward that was a good jolting left jab from Kalshaw and it absolutely rocked Mooney back on his heels and then the following attack persuaded the referee to give yet another standing count the third of this contest over Mooney and the referee has called it off in the second round and Mooney it was an absolutely right decision because Mooney badly hurt around the nose and not too steady on his legs either and so Colshaw has done it again Colshaw of Heighton in Lancashire who will not be 18 for another eight days 17 years old ABA light flyweight champion in only his fifth senior contest and keeps up this remarkable record in these championships of never having been taken beyond the second round. Truly a worthy winner of the ABA light flyweight title. Second round of this ABA flyweight final on the left in the white singlet and the red headguard, Paul Ingle from Scarborough. Still only 18, although he was in this final last year. He didn't win it, but he's hot favourite to do so this time. His opponent in the white head guard and the dark singlet, Mickey Horobin, the London champion from the St Pancras Club. He's 24. Not, uh, not a lot in it in the opening round, but I suspect Ingle might just have shaded it. Ingle's giving a little height and reach away here to Horobin, so he has to try to claim the inside position all the time, and he's done that fairly well. Horobin's punches tend to come in a bit wide, and Ingle is keeping his punches shorter, and working well when he gets the chance to come inside. But it's pretty close. In the semi-finals at Blackpool three weeks ago, Ingle outpointed Neil Armstrong of Scotland, you know, the same man that he beat at the same stage last year. Both holding. And Horobin came through after a very aggressive win in the semi-finals of Blackpool over the Welsh champion, Sean Rees. He had Rees down twice in the third round before the Welshman was counted out on his feet. Horobin holding again, two portions. The public warning next time, then it will cost him marks. Since he uh, appeared in the ABA final last year, Ingle has won a bronze medal in the World Junior Championships in Lima, in Peru, last autumn. And since that defeat, he's been undefeated. close indeed Ingle hasn't quite put on the whirlwind performance we saw in this ring last year Again, scoring well towards the end of this round. The second. And as the bell ends, the second. Horobin still very much in this, although one feels that Ingle just about still has the edge. Seconds 
So here we go into the final three minutes of this ABA flyweight final. Wearing the white singlet with the red trunks and head guard is Paul Ingle from Scarborough, who started as very much the favourite, having been in the final here last year when he was only 17, but losing it. And his opponent here in the white uh, head guard is Mickey Horobin, the London champion from St Pancras, who's 24. This is a close contest, although I think Ingle's just about, just about got the edge after the opening two rounds. But it certainly isn't the sort of whirlwind performance we saw from Ingle last year when he fought himself to a standstill against John Armour from Chatham, but didn't get the decision. This time he's paced himself, perhaps a little more cleverly. On the same, at the same time, he hasn't quite imposed himself on Horrible. So it's very much up for grabs still, this title, the ABA Flyweight Championship, between Ingle of Scarborough in the white singlet and Horrible of North London. Since he was in the final last year, Ingle has been out to Peru and won a bronze medal in the World Junior Championships, which is no mean feat, and has been undefeated since then. Horobin, in getting to this final, has won three of his five contests inside the distance. But he hasn't managed to make a punch really tell on this young Yorkshireman, Ingle. Horobin's best punch is the left hook, but uh, it hasn't been too noticeable. Still very open, with just over a minute to go. And Horobin looking quite strong at this stage and forcing Ingle back. And Ingle having a job to stave him off. Somebody's gum shield has flown up. It's uh, Horobin's. So just as it was all heating up to a tremendous climax, a little bit of a hiatus here while the gum shield is washed and replaced in the London champion's mouth. What? Something like half a minute still to go. <laughs> Difficult to pick a winner now. Horobin, I think, has finished the stronger of the two. Good finish by Horrigan. Bell coming up. Oh, that was a hard contest at ABA flyweight final between Mickey Horrigan, here he is, from St Pancras, and Paul Ingle, the runner-up last year. And uh, who's to say how it's going to go this year? I thought Ingle shaded the first two rounds, but Horobin, I think, quite clearly won the last. So it could be very, very close indeed, almost as close as that haircut that Horobin has got. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, by a majority decision, your ABA national flyweight champion 1991, Ingle for the and red Ingle corner. Has got it. Ingle, who lost in these finals last year, did enough, presumably, with two of the judges on the first two rounds here, to steal a very, very close, look at that haircut, very, very close decision here over Mickey Horobin of St Pancras. And it all ends in good sportsmanship. Ingle of Scarborough is the ABA flyweight champion. Point to Warren Burr, 60, 57, red, 59, 58, red. So we come to the final three minutes of this ABA Bantamweight final. Wearing the yellow trunks is the Scottish champion, David Hardy from the Gallagher Club in Glasgow. 
and his opponent in the all dark strip comes from Middlesbrough from the South Bank Club that's Michael Gibbons and uh, Hardy has done two rounds of finishing here and Gibbons has had the mother and father of a talking to a real tongue lashing by his trainer before the start of this final round and it may have done a bit of good because suddenly Gibbons looks as though he might come to life and he hasn't done that so far it's not been a very distinguished final both 20 years old Hardy is the Scottish champion but uh, has reached here this final something way beyond anything he's achieved before and Gibbons in the dark strip has had a very easy path to this final because he's had a walkover at the previous two stages because his opponents couldn't uh, come up to scratch for one reason or another so he hasn't boxed for seven weeks his right hand from Hardy and Gibbons again looks perplexed and worried and beginning to look rather tired and Hardy this strong little Scott still pushing forward battling away with two hands and unless Gibbons can really find something in the closing couple of minutes Scotland look likely to lift this title that was a good left hand and Gibbons almost went down and he's gone to one knee now and I think that signals the end I can't see Gibbons coming back from this and he's almost got nothing left Gibbons hardly knows what to do or where to go now terribly tired well four marks to Gibbons who's actually now trying to do something and come back but it's a bit late in the day now so David Hardy in the yellow trunks from the Gallagher Club on the verge of being the champion unless he does something terribly silly Staying on top of his man, Gibbons trapped on the ropes. And you have to admire the courage of Gibbons, who might easily have psychologically turned it in, as it were, after the count, but didn't, and stayed manfully with it to the end. But there can't be much doubt that Hardy is the champion. Let's look at that uh, punch that uh, almost floored him, then did put him down on one knee. Gibbons with his back to the rope, sometimes the one, tremendous left hook to the chin. And he almost went down, and then when the count started, he did in fact take it on one knee. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, by a unanimous decision, your ABA National Bantamweight Champion 1991, Hardy, from the red corner. And not surprisingly, all three judges have awarded it to the Scottish champion, David Hardy. Tough little battler, very strong, and just too strong for Michael Gibbons. And uh, the featherweight final, and wearing the white singlet, the Commonwealth Games, gold medalist of 1990 in Auckland, John Irwin from the Tom Hill Club, and that's Irwin on the floor in the opening seconds. And the man who put him there is Mark Bowers from the Pinewood Star Club in the home counties. So Irwin, England international, Commonwealth Games gold medalist, has to suffer uh, a knockdown and a standing count in the opening seconds of the opening round.
And Bowers has tasted uh, blood there. Well outreached by Owen, who's got far more experience than he has. Owen will be 22 at the end of this month. Bowers is only 20. So that was quite a shock for us and most certainly for Owen. Well, Bowers is the man who whacked a very good left hook into the solar plexus of Ian McLeod of Scotland in the third round of their semi-final in Blackpool a few weeks ago. So we know he can punch. And uh, so does Owen now. And Owen getting his superior reach and his uh, superior technical skill to work here. And Bowers beginning to feel a few himself, particularly from the left hand of Owen. Very fast moving round. There's another good right hand from Bars and Owen staggered again. And uh, Bauer has got trouble with his left eye. It's not cut, but it's shutting at an alarming rate. Now, heaven knows what's caused that. And Bowers can't, I think, now see out of that left eye. And this is going to be a terrible handicap for him, if indeed the referee lets him go on. The eye is almost shut. Heaven knows how that's happened. The referee having another close look at it. You'll never get through three rounds with that eye. It's impossible. So he's had Irwin on the floor, and now he's got this terrible handicap. And a good right hand from Irwin, somewhere near that eye. Bowers, who's obviously disturbed because he knows of his trouble finishing this round on the end of a bit of punishment. Having started it, sensation. Well, Bowers now having to go back for attention from Liz Stevens, the former heavyweight in that uh, dark outfit. And you can see for yourself how the eye is almost totally shut. Let's have another look at what happened here in the very opening seconds of this contest. Left hook. And Irwin sprawled in an undignified way. The Commonwealth Games champion sprawled all over the place. Second round. Second Bowers in the dark strip has come out to the second round with his left eye almost totally shut against the Commonwealth Games champion in the white singlet John Irwin from the Tom Hill Club in Denneby near Doncaster. Got a lot of support in this Albert Hall tonight. I saw quite a crowd of Irwin supporters earlier in the day. They must have had a shock when he was sprawled on the floor in the opening seconds. And Bowers isn't finished yet. Bowers, the home counties champion for the second year running. Hard-hitting reputation. You can just about, I suspect, see out of that left. Just about. Out of that left eye. No one using all the ring. And good footwork to dance rings around Bowers here and try to keep his left hand working.
Everything now depends whether Bowers can plant another left hook on Irwin, like the one he succeeded in getting home in the opening seconds. Irwin cautioned about the elbow. That's the sort of thing that might have caused the eye trouble, actually. And he's really boxing very well, although he's boxing on the retreat, but he's doing the scoring. Scoring heavily again as we come towards the end of the second. So Irwin has come very steadily and skillfully back into this contest and may well be in front at this point against an opponent whose left eye is giving him terrible problems. Third and last round. Well, this could be a very interesting final round here. Mark Bowers in the dark uh, strip from the Pinewood Star Club, the home counties champion. And his opponent here, the Commonwealth Games champion, John Irwin from Yorkshire, who surprisingly is making his first appearance in an ABA final, although he did reach the semi finals in 88. his fourth attempt to win the ABA title, Irwin, and this just could be his night despite the near disaster at the start of the contest. But again, one has to say, Young Bowers is a terrier and he hits hard and he's not going to quit. His left eye is still bunged up badly. He's done well to get this far with it. And Irwin still having to take a few hard punches to get inside. Well, if young John Smith, who's only seven years old, sitting at home watching this from Twyford, he's Mark's, uh, Mark Barr's biggest fan. He's not too well at the moment. But uh, he'll be very proud of his uh, hero, Mark Bowers, with this performance. Good right from Owen. Stop! And I suppose what? it's fair to say that uh, Bowers had that initial success when he dropped Owen. But since then, it's been hard going for him. The left eye's been shut. And for two rounds now, he's been on the end of some very, very skillful boxing and a lot of good punching but he's still sticking with it. Good contest, and a very, very worthy ABA final. Between two good men. And this is likely to be one of the best of the night. half a minute left both of them now will be feeling this it's been hard going Bauer still attacking and Irwin still trying to box him off wonderful contest and this crowd already beginning to applaud them even though we're a little way from the end
And Irwin's superior boxing again, picking up the points as the bell brings to an end a very fine ABA featherweight final. Well worthy of some of the men who've held it in the past, people like Pat Cowdell and George Gilbody, Curtin Lang and Ken Buchanan, and of course Dave Chandler. It's always been a good weight over the years, and this looks to me like the man who's won it. It's John Irwin. But we must wait for the decision. My lord, ladies and gentlemen, by a unanimous decision, your ABA National Featherweight Champion 1991, Irwin. And John Irwin takes the decision from all three judges. Well deserved and even more deserved in the fact that he was taken totally by surprise at the start of that contest and put on the floor. And full marks to his opponent, Mark Bowers, who fought so valiantly with the handicap of an almost completely closed left eye. Good contest. So we move into the final round of this ABA like welterweight final from Wales in the white singlet is Jason Matthews under heavy fire now at the start of this final round from George Smith of Canby Island wearing those distinctive candy striped trunks which he designed himself incidentally for the club. Smith has had a hard passage so far and in fact had a standing count right on the bell at the end of the second round. Matthews of Wales and the White Trunks is an experienced man. He boxed for Wales in the Commonwealth Games in Auckland last year. He's been in a final before. He was in the ABA lightweight final two years ago and lost on points to Mark Ramsey. And uh, up to this point, he certainly kept Smith on the end of some good boxing. But Smith in the candy stripe trunks did a good job in Blackpool on the Scottish champion. And he pulled something out of the bag here. It doesn't really look possible now. Matthews is well on top. Has won the first two rounds. And Smith has got a lot to do. Jason Matthews from the Aberbargoid Club. 22 next month. Welsh champion. Comes from the Valleys. South of Merthyr. He has worked as a scaffolder, but he's currently unemployed. It's Matthews and the White Trunks still keeping his boxing together as Smith attacks. For the most part, Matthews has kept Smith off balance. Matthews caution there about punches to the kidneys. last minute now. And Smith has not been allowed to produce the sort of blistering attacks that uh, took the Scottish champion Ian Black by surprise in Blackpool. Never really managed to keep a sustained attack going here. He's usually been kept off balance and on the back foot by the constant aggression of Jason Matthews, the Welsh champion. Smith now beginning to look very tired as he goes back. And pure experience, the heat of many an international battle has told here for Matthews. And the bell ends that ABA like welterweight final, and I think we'll find that Jason Matthews has won it pretty comfortably. Here he is. He'll be 22 next month. And uh, if he has won it, as I think he has, that will be compensation for the defeat in the lightweight final two years ago. My lord, ladies and gentlemen, by a majority decision, your ABA 
national light welterweight champion, 1991, Matthews from the blue corner. Well, the Welsh champion has made it, but uh, one judge voted against him, which is surprising. Matthews, beaten two years ago in the lightweight final, is the light welterweight champion of 91, and no doubt we shall hear more of George Smith in the future. Seconds out, second round. Uh. Round two of this ABA welterweight final, wearing the red singlet, the Welsh champion Joe Calzaghi, who's only 19, he's a southpaw, leads with his right, and opposing him here from the Royal Marines in the blue singlet, Trevor French. Calzaghi 19, French 20 this month. And uh, Calzaghi's had the better of the opening round. He's a rather elegant, upright boxer with this southpaw style. And uh, the style completely different from French's. French, very stockily built and uh, comes in crouched over, pumping away with uh, hooked punches. But so far, the straight puncher has had the better of it. And that's not too surprising. Calzaghi was... Uh, a first-class schoolboy and junior boxer. He won three Great Britain schoolboy titles. He won a National Association of Boys Clubs title, too. And he's all difficult enough to win. Calzaghi was good enough to win them. Calzaghi in the red singlet. And although French is trying to force him out of this and keep on top of him, the straight-punching Welshman is coping with it extremely well. Kawasaki nicely covered up inside, the elbows well tucked in, and also doing most of the scoring inside. Is where French, I suspect, hoped to get the better of him, but he's not. Calzaghi has his father, Enzo, Enzo Calzaghi, in his corner. That's a good right hand from the Royal Marine, and uh, Calzaghi doesn't want to take too many of those if he wants to win this title. Trevor French keeping up this non-stop attack, or rather a non-stop uh, moving forward. He's not throwing too many punches, and those he's throwing on very effective. about his head and also punching too far back on the body and so French will go into the final round I suspect a little bit behind or in fact could be quite a way behind after those first two rounds this is the Royal Marine Trevor French he threw one quite good right hand in that round which we'll see again here it's about all he has done throughout the contest that was the one and uh, that's the best and almost the only really effective thing he's done. So here we move into the last three minutes of this welterweight final, 10 stone 8 division. Trevor French of the Royal Marines in the blue singlet and the Welsh champion, Joe Calzaghi in red. Calzaghi is only recently out of the junior ranks. He boxed in last year's European Junior Championships in Czechoslovakia. 
where he lost some points to the Romanian, Preda, who went on to take the gold medal. French still swinging the occasional punch that catches Kalazaki to the head, but for the most part, the Welshman is in command. One of the men who won this title many years ago is certainly here tonight because I've seen him, Nicky Gargano, who in fact was ABA champion three years running in 1954, 55, 56. And he's sitting ringside tonight. Randolph Turpin won this title back in 1945. And Terry Marsh, of course. Both these men have had cautions for hitting too far back on the body and now Calzaghi, the Welshman, has got a public warning and that could cost him a mark in this final round, although he should have enough in hand for it not to make any difference. French has always looked aggressive without ever really doing any significant scoring. Pace now has slowed quite a bit. We're just... Uh, a few seconds remaining. Stop! And Calzaghi still getting the scoring punches through with French trapped in the corner. A game effort by French. He stayed with it to the end, but that looks like a very clear win indeed to me for the Welshman, 19-year-old Joe Calzaghi. My lords and ladies and gentlemen, by a unanimous decision, your ABA National Welterweight Champion 1991, Calzaghi from the Blue Corner, and Joe Calzaghi from the. Newbridge Club in Monmouthshire is the 1991 welterweight champion, fully deserved, and this young man's junior promise now being taken into and capitalised on in the seniors. Frank, it doesn't seem like 11 years since you were winning an ABA title. It's a decade, isn't it, Harry? You know, you blink and it goes. No grey years yet, Harry. Soon now, I think. <laughs> a decade. Yeah, 1980. What's it like to be back and watching the youngsters? It's very, very interesting because when I won the ABAs, you know, like, when you get to the final, you get very, very tired of the strip that, you know what I mean, the tension, everything gets up to you. And you can see it with the guys here. They're trying their hardest, but they're getting tired at the end. And it makes me feel relief because I was knackered at the end, Harry. Very lucky to win it that night. Very, very lucky. Now, I've got to talk to you about the eye, the right yeah. eye, which you've had the operation. Yes, sir. And, uh, well, tell us, how's it going? Um, I went to see David McLeod um, about one week ago, you know, after the Rob Friday performance. I think that was um, last Wednesday. You know, and he goes that he's going to give me another month and then take it from there. I thought he would have told me when I went to see him there, but he goes, the eyes are very delicate and they take their time to heal up and everything. So I've got to wait until he says whatever, Harry. I'm looking at it now. It's a little bit bloodshot, but I mean, apart from that, you wouldn't know yeah. there was any trouble. With technology today, Harry, you know what I mean? In your day, they used to take the eye out, eye completely out, juggle it up and put it back in. But today, <laughs> they've got technology with um, lasers and all them sort of things. So I don't know what he'd done. I was... Um, Asleep, Harry, and you know, I was singing zippity doo dah when I come around. But when I was asleep, I don't know what he'd done. He'd done some laser treatment and sewed it up here and there and give it a little slap and fixed the area, I think, Professor McLeod. Is it perfectly comfortable? I mean, no irritation? No, no, no irritation at all at the moment. It's a little bit sometimes at night when I turn it, 
turn that way, it gets a little bit funny. But apart from that, I'm all right, Harry. I might have to get a pair of glasses like you soon. <laughs> This promises to be one of the most interesting finals of the night, the light middleweight championship. In the green strip is Tim Taylor from the Newcastle Repton Club, 30 years old now, who uh, won this title last year. And facing him tonight, 26-year-old Lee Ferry from the Triumph Club in Coventry. In Coventry, he's won four of his six uh, championship bouts to get here inside a round. And Ferry is in his comeback season, the boy in blue. Been out of the ring for three years, made a comeback this season, and here he is in the ABA final. Something better than he's ever done before. And facing the senior man in these finals, Tiger Tim Taylor in green. Perry has had so many quick wins this season that uh, the first round is likely to be the danger round for Taylor, who is, by reputation, a slow starter. It's a question of seeing whether Ferry in blue can get his punches through in these opening seconds. He's connecting with one or two, but Taylor taking them well. Taylor, who won this title at the seventh attempt last season, and now through to the final again. Tremendous performances by Tim Taylor from London. Ferry from the Triumph Club had the quickest uh, win in the ABA semi finals in Blackpool three weeks ago. He took just 46 seconds to beat the Scottish champion, Steve Morrison. And Ferry standing his ground here and thumping the punches through the guard of Taylor. But Taylor seemingly not too perturbed by them. Again, Ferry connects and he's connected with several there and there's a standing count over the reigning champion, Tim Taylor. About 15 seconds of this round remaining. As Ferry tries to get it all over. Taylor fighting back and still taking one or two head punches. And his mouth is hurt. And the bell sounds the end of a pretty fierce three minutes. As Taylor drops onto the seat and knows he's really in a struggle. Well, Ferry did just what uh, he had to do here. He started throwing the punches hard and this little uh, sequence here Shows them getting through to the head of the defending champion until the referee comes in and orders a standing count over Taylor. And it's a pretty weary Lee Ferry, 26-year-old Ferry from the Triumph Club in Coventry, who comes out for this final round against the defending champion in green, Tim Taylor from Repton in London. Although uh, Ferry had a little bit of success in the opening round, Taylor had much the better of the second round. And Taylor really is at 30, an extraordinary character. He comes plodding on, he takes punches well, and he gets into his stride, it seems, as the contest goes further. He didn't even sit down between rounds, and he's still stalking forward, plodding away. And Ferry can't do a lot about it. Coventry man breathing hard not throwing many punches now and still over two minutes to go 
Taylor getting accurate left right through Perry sticking with it but he can't really summon up the punches any longer it's all he can do to stay with it and this remarkable 30 year old champion Tim Taylor a jeweler Tiger Tim we call him showing again what makes him an ABA champion fit, strong, determined Taylor again doing all the good work very very bravely trying to come forward that's all he can do to lift his arms now Very head down trying to come inside, trying to keep out of the way of the rain of punches that come at him and this time the count is over Ferry Taylor took one in the first round now Ferry must take one in the last we're in the closing 20 seconds or so The punch by Ferry. Brought one out of the bag, a left hand there. But it's too late. Great challenge by Ferry. all his other troubles gets a public warning for holding in the closing seconds there's the bell and Taylor finishes strongly he's proclaiming victory perhaps overdoing it but at 30 years old you're entitled to celebrate if he's won it for the second year running it's a great achievement Well, Ferry had to take a standing guard himself towards the end, and these were the punches that set it up. Ferry desperately tired, and Taylor meeting him with rocking punches to the head. Ladies and gentlemen, by a unanimous decision, your ABA National Light Middleweight Champion, 1991, Taylor. From and the Tim Taylor, Tiger Tim, does it again. Two years running, wonderful achievement, fully deserved. A spare a thought for Lee Ferry, who came back this season after three years out and got himself to the final and gave us a tremendous performance. Best round, Mark Edwards in the blue singlet attempting to win this title for the second time and boxing here Eric Noy from the Moss Side Club in Manchester Noy in the yellow singlet Mark Edwards in the Royal Marines Commonwealth Games bronze medalist last year in New Zealand and winner of this title three years ago at Wembley when he outpointed Nicky Piper of Wales Edwards will start uh, favourite to win this against Noy who's making his first appearance in an ABA final and Edwards going to work very quickly here and forcing a standing count over Noy of Moss Side in the opening 35 seconds or so. Eric Noy will be 24 next Sunday. And Edwards again getting the punches through and vicious punches there are to a noise over. And I think this might well be the end. He's badly hurt. 
Will the referee permit him to go on if he beats the count? And he's out, he's been counted out. As he got up, he's been counted out. And so, in just over a minute or so, Eric Noy is beaten. And Mark Edwards has come back to reclaim the title in the most decisive and distinctive way with that win in just over a minute. Mark Edwards, 27 years old, Royal Marine, Commonwealth Games bronze medalist and winner of this title three years ago and now winner again. This is the way it was done and it was done with a series of vicious punches, a tremendous repertoire of different punches, uppercuts, hooks, straight punches, body punches, head punches, everything went in against the man from Manchester who eventually tumbled over and was clearly badly hurt. the white here is one of the top prospects in the country this is Anthony Todd from the Darlington Club he's only 18 Southpaw and his opponent here in the dark strip is 27 year old Jeff Donaldson from the Basingstoke Club who's making his first appearance in an ABA final after many years of striving through the southern counties well, Todd will have started quite a warm favorite to win this but uh, although he's been the better looking boxer in the opening round He's been caught once or twice with good head punches by Donaldson, who's been pretty aggressive. Eighteen-year-old Todd in white won a silver medal in the European Junior Championships in Czechoslovakia last summer, and then went to the World Junior Championships in Peru, beaten the quarterfinals there by German. He hasn't lost a contest since. Donaldson has been winning a Southern Counties light heavyweight title since 1984. He's won five of them in all. This has been by far his most successful season. He's certainly not uh, overawed by Todd's, rep by, uh, Todd's reputation. As he stood his ground, and at times he's giving as good as he's getting. Todd's going to have to uh, work hard here and work well. He can't afford to get careless. And he's beginning to trade punches with uh, Donaldson, which I'm not sure is the right thing to do. He should be trying to outbox him. Donaldson might well be the stronger of the two men. And again, Donaldson gets the right hand through, and Todd is looking a little bit shaky. He's neglected his boxing. He's decided to trade punches with uh, the older man, and it hasn't paid off. And Donaldson is very much beginning to fancy his chance here. Todd now finds himself engaged in a very hard contest indeed. And at the moment, he's not getting the better of it either. Well, that was a fine second round by Jeff Donaldson, the 27-year-old. British telecom engineer from Basingstoke, and if he can keep that sort of thing up in the third, then he might spring a major surprise. So this is going to be a very interesting final round here between Todd in white and Donaldson, who's nine years his senior. Todd with uh, an astonishing junior record, four national schoolboy titles, an ABA junior championship, and two 
NABC Championships, the National Association of Voice Club uh, titles. Very prestigious. And uh, tough. having a very tough championship uh, baptism here in these ABA finals. Donaldson completely unregarded at the start of the season as a possible champion. But now not too far from being one. getting the box a little better again and keeping Donaldson out which is what he must do he played Donaldson's game in the second round and it got him nowhere and Todd looking much better now as he's gone back to his boxing style Donaldson a long way from being beaten. Turning into a bit of a rough and tumble again. And that might well suit Donaldson. Todd Coulson not holding in this final round of this light heavyweight final. And Todd still hasn't got the complete upper hand here. Had a fair opening round, he had a bad second. He started this final round well. Donaldson, I think, is very tired now. And Todd might just about steal this, but it's going to be close. Now that's just a, a tumble. Not too long left now. Both men now very tired. Well, it's going to be a close thing. I think Todd just about had the, the better of it in the end. And it may well be that he'll be the man to win this title at uh, men like Jack Peterson and Bruce Woodcock and Henry Cooper and John Conte have all won in the past. Ladies and gentlemen, by a unanimous decision, your ABA National Light Heavyweight Champion 1991, Todd from the Red Corner. The 18-year-old Southpaw, Anthony Todd, wins the Light Heavyweight Crown. And so Darlington have another success. Alan Hall won them two ABA like Walter titles uh, in recent years and now Todd has put them on the championship roll once again. Well, ABA finals night is always a very busy night for one man here behind the scenes. His name is Alan Tetlow and Alan is the man who year after year has the job of engraving the trophies as they're won and uh, indeed he does them for the losers as well. Alan Tetlow has been doing this job now for some 20 years and he goes back to the days when John Conte was winning ABA championships. We've worked it out that over the years, engraving winners and losers trophies, he must have engraved something like 500 trophies. Now the heavyweight final and wearing the familiar green of the Repton Club from London, Paul Lawson, who was runner-up to this title last year. And facing here the man in the white vest, Dave Roberts, from the northwest of England, from the Williston Club, who'll be 30 next month. And Roberts making his eighth attempt 
to win an ABA title and has never before got remotely near this stage. So Lawson, the runner-up last year, and then Roberts, the man who's tried so often without success. Scottish opponent in the semi-finals of Blackpool three weeks ago, body punching, achieved it. In the final last year, Lawson was beaten by Keith Inglis, who's now gone professional. Roberts had a very hard semi-final in Blackpool with uh, a near novice from Wales called Carl Mumford. Hard contest, but uh, the Welsh threw in the towel in the second round. And Lawson at this moment, in this opening round, outboxing Roberts and keeping it nicely at distance where he wants it. trying to come forward, but walking onto punches. Lawson, 24, and Roberts, close to 30. trying to force his way in and still Lawson keeping him out uh, it's a good opening round by Paul Lawson whose brother Harry won the ABA light heavyweight title in 1988 three minutes of the ABA heavyweight final in green Paul Lawson from the Repton Club in London in white Dave Roberts from the Williston Club in Cheshire Lawson in front there can't be any argument about that but has Roberts got something left in the right hand with which to uh, unsettle Paul Lawson Lawson a transport manager and a king golfer he plays golf off a handicap of six which is well out of my league Dave Roberts, the man in white, has been struggling for eight years to make an ABA final. Uh, only this season has he ever won the Northern Counties Championship, which is one of the stepping stones towards uh, the finals. So it's been a hard struggle, but he's made it, but I don't think he's going to win the championship. Unless Lawson comes badly unstuck in this final round. And now, Roberts has quite a heavy nosebleed. Lawson really putting on a, a nice show of boxing. It's uh, 
sometimes these heavyweight finals can become rather lumbering, mauling affairs, but uh, Lawson giving us a display of quite elegant boxing, and it's pretty nippy stuff for a big man. And Lawson still moving speedily and cleverly. Roberts still looking for him. And the right hand of Roberts only just misses. The referee's going to give Roberts a little clean-up. The nose has been bleeding quite hard now for some time. All the referees in these championships now carry a pocket full of uh, tissues, and they're provided with a little plastic bag over the ring post where they deposit them very neatly and they've done the cleaning up. Again, Roberts tries to get the right hand over. Doesn't quite connect with it. And Lawson, it has to be said, has never really looked uncomfortable. And the bell ends the ABA heavyweight final. It looks as though Paul Lawson has won it, which means that, like brother Harry, he too will become an ABA champion. Ladies and gentlemen, by the unanimous decision, your ABA light heavy, heavyweight champion 1991 Lawson from the Red Corner and indeed Paul Lawson from the Repton Club is the ABA heavyweight champion and that's a fine win for Lawson and uh, well brother Harry will be pleased about that These are the biggest man of all in these finals, the super heavyweights. And wearing the red vest of Wales is Kevin McCormack, seeking his third title at this weight. And against him in the white vest, the shorter man from Scotland, despite the Welsh name, Gareth Evans. So a Welsh champion in the red singlet with an Irish name, Kevin McCormack, and a Scottish champion with a Welsh name, Gareth Evans. McCormack had the edge in the opening round with his superior reach and indeed with his superior experience. Gareth Evans has, uh, well, he's one of the surprise finalists here. But McCormick's won two of these titles in 1988 and again last year. He's been in two Commonwealth Games in Edinburgh and New Zealand. And he's a man now of considerable experience and would start uh, a hot favourite to win this. Incidentally, the only final of the evening that doesn't have an English boxer in it. Evans beginning to force it a little harder. The man in the white vest from Scotland. McCormick keeping his boxing together very coolly. If he doesn't get rattled, he should be able to handle this from long range. It's up to the Scot, really, to take this to McCormick. He's got to come inside. He can't work from long range. He's got to force it. Yes, 
Used to looking body punch from McCormick with the left hand. And another. They're yeah, the sort of punches that take a lot out of you. Evans now reduced to looking for him with a, a looping right hand. And McCormick scoring heavily from long range. So two, two good runs completed for the reigning champion, Kevin McCormick. Now 24 years old. The final three minutes of the super heavyweight final. Kevin McCormick, the reigning champion in the red singlet, against the Scottish champion in the white singlet, Gareth Evans from Leith Victoria Club. McCormick from the Coed Ava Club near Newport. And McCormick's had just the edge of the first two rounds, seeking his third ABA super heavyweight title. McCormick, man of long experience now, he's 24. And if he does win this title tonight, he'll be the first Welsh amateur boxer ever to win three ABA titles. Stop. If McCormick just keeps boxing sensibly, he can uh, keep command of this. And I think box his way quite comfortably to a third title. Stop. Two cautions McCormick's had for holding. He doesn't want a public warning. It will cost him a mark. Heads up to both of them. These super heavyweight uh, finals, they very rarely provide the sort of rip-roaring climax one would expect. They tend to be rather plodding, laborious battles. And the Welsh corner rather severely ticked off for yelling at their man. And this is getting slightly out of hand now, too many infractions. and becoming a little bit of a mole, which is a pity. Because it was quite a good contest in the first two rounds. The referee's having a trouble now keeping it together. Evans of Scotland still waving his right arm about, trying to get it somewhere, but uh, so far McCormick's managed to evade it. And it looks more and more as we come towards the end of this, as though McCormick's going to get his third title. Although it probably won't be by a big margin. Fair enough, fair enough that uh, Evans has forced it all the way. Although know, he hasn't scored too heavily, at least in my opinion. Time added on for quite frequent stoppages. Getting towards four minutes now. And the bell at last concludes the super heavyweight final. And we must wait a few moments longer to find out whether Kevin McCormick here from Wales has won his record third title. Ladies and 
gentlemen, by a unanimous decision, your ABA National Super Heavyweight Champion, 1991, McCormack from the Blue Corner. And 24-year-old Kevin McCormack from the Croyd Eva Club in Newport is the ABA Super Heavyweight Champion for the third time and creates a Welsh record. No Welshman has won three ABA titles before. And no wonder. They celebrate. Well, there were 12 finals scheduled to take place here tonight. In fact, only 11 were boxed because, uh, unfortunately, in the, the lightweight final, Patrick Gallagher, the defending champion from the Angel Club, was found to have uh, a bad left-hand injury at the medical uh, today and was withdrawn from the final, leaving Paul Ramsey of Small Heath the champion. Nonetheless, we undoubtedly have 12 very happy men here in the Royal Albert Hall tonight, the 12 ABA champions of 1991. Hope you two have enjoyed our boxing. Now from the Albert Hall, good night.